And we're back. You are listening to the Talking Boxing with Billy C. A radio show. You're watching us on the Fight Now television channel. And if you don't have Fight Now, why the hell not? <laughs> Call your local uh, TV provider, whether it's Satellite Dish or Cable, and tell them that you want the Fight Now channel added to your sports channel lineup. It's that simple. Pick up the phone and call. For all the information about the channel, you can find it on their website, www.fightnow.com. Speaking of now, joining me, we're ready to do our uh, heavyweight history, Tony Treem. Good morning, Tony. Good morning, my man. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Been uh, looking forward to doing the next segment here, our uh, heavyweight history or whatever we're calling it. I don't know. It's, it's, it's your heavyweight gig. Heavyweight spotlight, I thought. Well, it used to be called the heavyweight spotlight until we decided that we were going to cover uh, the heavyweights, the, hit, uh, the history. I don't know, man. Whatever we call it. We're whatever here. you call it's good. And we're doing it now. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know, you and I had talked. It don't matter. Yeah, exactly. You and I had talked uh, about uh, today's uh, topic for, for a while, and and I've been talking about it on the show. And what we're going to do today is back in the day. Now, Joe Lewis was a, a world champion forever. I, I don't think anybody has uh, held the title as long as he has. Um, and um, during that era, during the time he was a world champ, he got labeled with fighting. Well, they called it the bum of the month club. And he fought very often. And, uh, you know, you and I have been talking about, you know, we look at these guys, and to be honest with you, they're far from being bums. Let's talk about that. What do you think about the term bum of the month club when you compare it to today? Was it, was it that much better of an era then? Or, or what do you think of these guys? You know, Billy, that, that, that's, you know, is it better than today? Of course, it's back in Joe Lewis today, in, in my opinion, I should say, of course, because I'm sure a lot of listeners would disagree with me. But back in Lewis's day, the fighters were better than they are today. We, you know, we don't have a heavyweight division today, and that's why I'm saying that. You know, we're really, really weak today with the heavyweight division. So to compare Lewis's era to today, I, I don't think that's uh, a good comparison f- for the reason of, of our lack of heavyweights. But Joe Lewis didn't fight bums. The guys he fought were phenomenal prize fighters, and he had hellacious records before they even fought him. To call them bums, I don't get it uh, at all. No, I, I agree with you. And, and I, I, I took a look at at uh, his his resume, so to speak. And from the time he won the world title, which was uh, against Jimmy Braddock in 1937, all the way up until he actually retired uh, from the ring uh, following uh, his fight in 1942 against Abe Simon. I've taken a look at all of those fights, and I honestly can't find a guy that I would classify as a bum. The only guy, and I had said this to you uh, on the phone when we first talked about possibly doing this, as I said, oh, I found one guy, and I referred to a 3-3 and Johnny Davis, but as I look back on it, he wasn't even during the era that uh, that Joe Lewis was the champion. Um, Johnny Davis was actually his first bat, a first fight back uh, from uh, from retirement. Uh, well, wasn't that Johnny Davis fight? Uh, wasn't that kind of a funny deal? If, if my memory, uh, if, if my memory's right, uh, wasn't that supposed to have been an exhibition? And and the New York State Athletic Commission said no, it can't be because. It, they could only allow three rounds for an exhibition. That went four or six rounds or something, and then Lewis knocks him out in the first round because of that. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that the Davis fight? That could have been because the uh, um, the the record. I mean, on his record, it shows that Johnny Davis was knocked out in the first round, and it was uh, that fight was in New York. It was in Buffalo, New York. But you're right, it was Buffalo. You're right. That's where it was. And, and and I am right then because you're you're bringing back you know you're hitting memory points for me. Uh, that was supposed to have been an exhibition, and the New York State Athletic Commission uh, uh, disallowed that, and uh, and and so it was a heavyweight championship fight, and and that was a weird weird situation for a championship fight. Well, I don't know if it was a championship fight because that was his first fight. He retired after Abe Simon as a champ, and and he the fight against Johnny Davis. Um, came uh, um, in 1944, two years later. So that was his first fight uh, prior to the second Billy Kahn fight. But but Lewis fought, he fought a bunch of, 
Lewis has a, a funny kind of a record, you know, as champion in, 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 in his interim of retiring and coming back. He had a ton of exhibitions. Yeah, well, I'm, I mean, I, he fought tons of exhibitions. You know, the only fight that seems weird to me, uh, again, we're off our, our, our that bum in a month club era, but in 1949 he fought uh, Johnny Secor, and that took place in Boston, and that was a no contest, no decision, ten round fight that is listed as an exhibition, um, and that's the only one on his, you know, on his record, so to speak, on his professional record that's listed as an exhibition. Did I lose Johnny you? Johnny score was oh. a no contest. Yeah, it sh- it shows up as a no contest, no decision. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. Right. 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 Okay, let's, let's talk about some of these bums. Yeah, let's talk about some of these bums because... Let's talk about some of these bums they call bums, okay? Uh, like, like, like you mentioned earlier, he, he, he beat James J. Braddock for the heavyweight championship of the world. And, and uh, that was kind of a funny fight there, too, because uh, Braddock's people arranged it where he would get 10% of Joe Lewis's uh, uh, purses for the next 10 years, which I thought was kind of interesting that... You know, Braggs has some pretty smart businessmen. Of course, uh, apparently Lewis didn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, Lewis knocks him out in eighth round, okay? Then he fights a guy like Tommy Farr. He fights uh, Nathan Mann. He fights uh, Harry Thomas. He fights Max Smelling twice, of course. We know the outcome of both of those. Uh, John Henry Lewis, Jack Roper, Tony Delento, uh, Bob Pastor, Ontario Godoy, uh, Johnny Paycheck. Uh, Al McCoy, Red Berman, uh, Tony Musco, Musto, or however you say his name, Buddy Bear, Lou Nova. Uh, I fought Buddy Bear a couple times. The first time it was a disqualification because the Bear's corner wouldn't leave uh, the ring, but then he knocks him out in the first round the second time. Uh, and, of course, Simons, and, and uh, we already talked about Johnny Davis. Uh, you know, how do you call these guys bums? Uh Braddock fought guys like Pete Lazaro, Tuffy Griffith, Jimmy Slattery, Jack Roper, Dynamite Jackson, Corn Griffin, John Henry Lewis, Art Langley, Max Bear. Uh, Tommy Farr fights guys like Tommy Laughlin, Bob Olin, Ben Flood, a Walker Nezel, or however you say it. I, I butcher names like you do. Nobody butchers names like I do, so don't even, don't even try to get on that bandwagon. Uh uh, Nathan Mann uh, fight, fights guys like Don Redberry, Jack Roper, Steve Dudas, Gunnar Barlin, uh, Eddie Blunt, uh, Abe Feldman, Arturo Godoy, Bob Pastor, uh, Harry Thomas, uh, fought Harold Millionaire Murphy, Andy Mitchell, Frank Willis, Dynamite Jackson, Charlie Bailinger. Ed Unknown Wilson, a hell of a fighter, Unknown Wilson. Uh, John Henry Lewis, uh, he fights guys like Yale Oakham, Jimmy Her- Herana, Jimmy Braddock, uh, Lou, I don't know, Maxie Rosenblum, uh, Bob Olin, Tiger Jack Fox, uh, Al Grinder, Red Berman, uh, Lynn Henry, uh, Al Ellett. Uh, Patsy Patrono, Willie Reddish, which was uh, our man, uh, Sonny Liston's trainer, Jimmy Adamack. Jack Roper was a really an under underrated fighter uh, of the time. He he fought Red Fitz Simmons, Buck Elliott, uh, Paul. I can't say his name. Berlin Bar- Langley, oh. Abe Fieldman, Hank Hankerson. You know, none of these guys are bummed. Junior uh, Munsell, Tony Galento, uh, you know, that was a fight. Uh, he, he put Lewis down. He, you know, he fought them all. Uh, I don't think I have to go into that. Well, let's look, let, let, let's look at a couple. Now, first of all, John Henry Lewis, you know, this was a guy. Now, now uh, the, the thing is, a lot of the names that you mentioned in terms of opposition to some of these fighters that Joe Lewis fought, the first argument people are going to say is, "Well, you know, he was a, he was a light heavyweight. Uh, Tammy Marilla was a middleweight. Uh, you know, uh, Tiger Joe, uh, Tiger Fox was a was a middleweight. You know, the, these guys. But but that wasn't 
Joe Lewis's fault. That was the nature of how uh, the boxing business was. I mean, if you were, they weren't as concerned with weights back then. In other words, I'm the championship. I'm the heavyweight champion of the world, and you're a middleweight, and you want to fight me. Well, guess what? I'm going to give you the chance. I, I didn't care that I was, you know, fifteen, twenty pounds heavier than you, and that was the that was the norm. But the guys' names that that stick out. I, I think even even the marginal fans that could that could tell like a John Henry Lewis who was a world champion and and you know other fighters that are in that in that era of you know uh bum in a month club like Billy Kahn. I mean they they all know that Buddy Bear and Billy Kahn and and Max Schmeling and of course uh, Jim Braddock you can't you can't uh, say anything negative about him because that's who Joe Lewis won the title from um and Max Bear I mean, everybody knows that those guys weren't bums, but the names that come up a lot um, when you refer to Bum at a Month Club, at least the, the names that when I've asked people and they, they mention it to me, really, it's been four names specifically. Out of all of those fights, four names come up. And uh, they are uh, Tony Galento, uh, Johnny Paycheck, Lou Nova, and Abe Simon. And all four of those guys, Abe Simon uh, fought... Uh, uh, fought uh, uh, Joe Lewis a, a couple of times, but you know, for an example, in, in 1942 he had a record of uh, which was the last uh, uh, title defense that that uh, um, Joe Lewis had. He had a record of 36 wins, nine losses, and a and a draw. That doesn't, to me, that doesn't define a bum. Well, no, that's not a bum. But look at Tony Galento. At the time he fought Joe Lewis, he'd been fighting 11 years, uh, Billy, and he had a record of 76 fights. And 53 KOs. That's not a bum. No, I know. I know. I mean, how many fighters today, excluding the Klitschko's, how many heavyweights today have the record of 76 fights? Well, even the Klitschko's don't have 76 fights. I understand that. But, I mean, but the Klitschko's are up in the 50s. You know, they're getting, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're in the 50s, you know, range. But look at Jack Roper. He had 116 total fights in his career. I mean, and uh, when he fought Joe Lewis, he had sixty-one fights with twenty-nine KOs. Well, the Isn't only guy, bomb? the only guy that's got over seventy fights that's that's a heavyweight right now uh, is um, is Tony uh, James Tony. I think James right, Tony, and he's really a middleweight, right? <laughs> if you want to argue, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, they, like to, like you mentioned, you know, they're going to argue and say, you know, uh, John Henry Lewis was a light heavyweight. Well, John Henry Lewis was at the end of his career. He was going blind. Come on, let's be fair. Joe Lewis did him a favor. They were good friends, as I'm, I'm sure most people know that. And Joe Lewis ended it with the least amount of damage. He came up with a plane, knocked him out in the first round. But, you know, he gave him a shot. No, there's no doubt. And, and Tony Tutungalento, um, I'm glad you pointed out that he was at the end of his career. I mean, 76 wins, 23 losses, five draws going into his fight with uh with Joe Lewis and he and 53 got, knockouts. Right. And and he got the reputation of being a power puncher. He was kind of a, a roly poly guy, but he wasn't a pushover fight. Oh, hell no, he wasn't a pushover fighter. He could he could take a he could take what he dished out. He was tough. He trained on beer, cigars and women. <laughs> my I mean, my hero. I mean, you know, he was a tough tough man. You know, a lot of people underestimate Galento. He was a hell of a prize fighter, a great heavyweight. He was, he's never going to, he's not, when I say great, I don't mean he's going to go down in history as the, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, but he was a very substantial, credible heavyweight of, of his era. One well, of the better ones of his era. Now, what about Johnny Paycheck? I don't, I, I've heard the name a lot, but I, I've never seen him fight. Uh, I don't know anything about Johnny Paycheck when he fought and lost uh, to uh, Joe Lewis, he only went two rounds with Lewis, uh, but he too had an impressive record: thirty-eight wins, only three losses, and two draws. And and Joe Lewis knocks him out in in two rounds. The was was the domination that Joe Lewis did over these fighters was that given the impression that they were bums? You know, I don't know. Way I know how to answer that, Billy, is when you're a great prize fighter, and, and as smooth as Joe Lewis and could hit with either hand and had one of the most beautiful jabs in, in, for a big man. And the, he could knock you out with, the, with a left hook or he could knock you out with a right cross or a straight right or whatever. It, it make, he'd almost make anybody look bad. 
you know. And Johnny Paycheck, you mentioned, uh, when he fought Joe Lewis, he was uh, he was in his seventh year of his career. Like you said, he had uh, 38 wins, uh, uh, three draws, and two losses. But he also had 28 knockouts at the time he fought Joe Lewis. You know, and he fought guys like Keen Levinsky, Red Bruce, Al Elliott. Uh, I, that's the only ones that come to mind right now. I, I'm sure there's others as we go on talking and stuff. But Paycheck was a was a good heavyweight contender. Uh, I mean, he's no great either, but he was a great contender at the time. He was, you know, in the top. He was in the top twenty most of his career. What about Lou Nova? How good was Lou Nova? Nova. Uh, Lou Nova, Lou Nova, come. Where's Lou Nova? Well, Lou Nova, uh, Lou Nova, fought, Nova, he, Nova, uh, Nova fought them all. You know, he, he, Lou Nova couldn't take a punch real well. Uh, he uh, he was tough. He he. Uh, God, Billy, I go blank on no, Nova. For some no problem. I know. I know that Lou. No- See, I always confused. Lou Nova with uh, Tony Two Ton Galento a lot because uh, for some reason I I, I always I, I thought I would mix those two up I, with the styles and stuff I thought they were similar in style uh, Lou Nova actually went um, uh, further uh, than uh, Tony uh, Galento Galento lasted four rounds and uh, Lou Nova uh, only lasted six but that particular fight was billed as a as a tough fight for for Joe Lewis and. And I think after all of this, if, if, if the listeners and viewers turn around and actually look at who was determined, who was being classified as a bum in a month club, really, I, 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 I would guarantee that you couldn't find uh, a fighter um, based on their record uh, in that period of time, which ran from uh, 1937 through uh, the Abe Simon fight in 1942, where compared to today or even the last 25 years, um, that uh, judging by a record only, that those guys would be uh, considered bums. So I, I just think that's an indication of how much the, uh, the, the, the sport has changed in terms of quality. And, and with that, that's a good uh, segue into Joe Lewis. How great was Joe Lewis? I mean, he finished with a 66 win, uh, only three losses in his career, 52 knockouts. Uh, he was the world champion from 1937 through 1948, uh, basically. And, um, uh, well, uh, yeah, actually, I'm wrong. He was the champ through 1948 when he retired. That was after Walcott, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I thought he retired sooner than that, but I guess not. He, uh, didn't he retire after he lost this, the the uh, unanimous decision to uh, Ezra Charles? Ezra Charles? No, he had retired before that fight. And uh, and and as a Charles uh, uh, became the champion, uh, he fought uh, for the uh, for the title. But no one recognized him. A lot of boxing people didn't recognize as a Charles because he did not beat Joe Lewis. And I think Joe Lewis came back after that. Um, I, he might have retired after the second Jersey Joe Walcock fight in, in 1948. Uh, after he knocked out Walcott in the eleventh round, he fought that um, that Johnny Secor uh, exhibition fight, which was a ten round fight. I think in preparation uh, for the Ezra Charles fight, which he fought in September of 1950. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was that the the uh, lacks in in fights from the Johnny Davis. Uh, I'm sorry, from the Abe Simon to the Johnny Davis was when he was involved in the service. Well, that's true. And after the Abe Simon fight, he donated his uh, his entire purse to the uh, United States Army Relief Fund. And after his Buddy Bear fight, he, he donates his entire purse to the uh, United States Naval uh, Relief Fund at, after the second Buddy Bear fight. That is not after the first one. Uh, but uh, Lewis... Uh, where am I going here? No, we were talking uh, about how was, great was he? How great was he? You know, arguably, a lot of people today say he's the best heavyweight that ever lived. Uh, I have him as the number fourth in, in my all-time great uh, heavyweights. I have him listed number four. I think in your when you did your heavyweight, I think you have him listed number three. I'm not sure, but I think you do. Uh, 
Joe Lewis, outside of Joe Lewis held the title for over 11 years. No other heavyweight champion ever done that. In his first 22 fights, he had over 42 knockdowns. Uh, he never lost a fight till he, he lost his first fight to Max Mellon. Uh, he fought every opposition out there. Uh, he, you can't uncredit Joe Lewis as a great prize fighter and, and being one of the best that ever lived, uh, in my opinion. Uh, he, he didn't fight bombs as they were labeled, in my opinion. Uh, one of the greatest heavyweights that ever lived. That's how great he was. And he'd probably beat any heavyweight in any era from his era forward. I, I, of course, Marciano, we know, beat him, but he was an old man. But if they, the fighters of of his time versus fighters of our time, which Joe Lewis is of our time, of course. He's of the modern era. But he would fight and probably beat any of them. Yeah, he was he was a big guy, especially for back then. I mean, he was six foot it's two. Smooth. Yeah, he was six foot two. Like you said earlier, he had power in both hands, and and uh, he donated a lot of, uh, of of his full purses and and at least partial partial uh, portion of his purse uh, to the army and uh, other branches of the service during World War Two. And that was actually the demise of him because the government just wouldn't leave him alone. He still owed taxes on that. Uh, money and they followed him around till till his last breathing oh, days and and oh, and like a hawk. oh it was terrible and and you know the images of him being wheeled out in in that last uh, fight he was uh uh in attendance at in Las Vegas uh he had the cowboy hat on he was in a wheelchair he he looked pretty damn near 80 90 years old and you know he was only 67 years old i mean that's mm-hmm. how quickly uh this man aged and and he did a lot for the sport uh, there's no question about it, and I'm almost I'm 99 percent sure that he held on to that title, uh, really from 1937 through 1948, and and retired uh, after that uh, second Jersey Joe Walcott fight because uh, there were some people that felt that Jersey Joe beat him. That first fight in in in, uh, in New York City was uh, uh, a 15 round split decision, and uh, some people felt that he got a gift, and just to prove them wrong. Uh, he fought him six months later uh, uh, in Yankee Stadium and, and knocked out Jersey Joe uh, in the 11th round. And, and, you know, another thing that you and I talked about, when he realized that uh, he needed money and, and uh, when Ezra Charles uh, beat him in a 15-round decision, he kind of made a comeback, and, and, you know, including that fight. And he started fighting some guys. And, you know, when you look at the guys that he was fighting, they weren't bums either. He, even even when he was getting a shot all the way up to Rocky Marciano, and of course uh, his last fight that that catapulted him to that shot at Rocky was a fight over the now uh, late great Jimmy Bivens in in 1951. Oh yeah, and he won a ten round decision over Jimmy Bivens, and he and he fought least of all. And uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, didn't recognize Ezra Charles as champion. Uh, because uh, Lisa Vold had the uh, the British Boxing Board uh, Council, I think it was, a championship. I'm not sure on that, Billy. You'll have to check on that, but I think I'm right. Uh, and uh, when uh, Charles went over and and uh, and fought Lisa Vold, then they recognized Charles as the heavyweight champion after uh, beating uh, Lewis. But let's go back to George Walcott a minute, if we can, because there was an, in the first fight, Jersey Joe saw something like Max Smelling saw something in the first fight. Are you familiar with this story? Um, I know that uh, the same thing with with uh, with the overhand right. Well, no. What, what I'm referring to, Joe Lewis saw a, a a flaw in Joe Lewis, and and he and he trained special to to uh, to beat Joe Lewis uh, because of this flaw he. He, he felt that he saw when watching films of Lewis and fighting. And what, what Jersey Joe actually saw was when Lewis threw that, would lead with his left, he would lean in and his back foot would lift slightly off the canvas and would put him off, off balance. Well, Smelling saw that also in the first fight. And, and that's what, you know, and so Jersey Joe would move to the, to the right or to the left, 
shift and he would throw the right and hit Lewis on the jaw. And, and, and in fact, Jersey Joe put Lewis down with that uh, theory that he was trying to use against Joe Lewis on, on that little flaw of Joe Lewis that he, that he saw and he thought he, uh, he could win on that flaw. Of course, he didn't, as we know. But, uh, but you're right. A lot of people thought Jersey Joe won that first fight, and, and that it that it was a uh, a robbery, and it was a gift to Lewis on that. But uh, I just wanted to bring that little point up. I hope it's interesting. No, that's great. Know. That's a great point. And you know, the the, the it's amazing uh, the weather. Like, uh, and I don't mean weather outside. I mean the the weathering of Joe Lewis because in the Max Schmeling fight back in 1936. Uh, he took a beating in that fight. I mean, it wasn't just a lucky shot that knocked him out in the 12th round. He he kind of took a beating in that fight, and he was a young kid coming up. And, and you know, that fight was, was on his mind. We all know the story when he got his second shot at, at Max, and it, and it had uh, huge uh, uh, ramifications uh, uh, with that fight and, and what it stood for. But um, I didn't know that uh, Jersey Joe Walcock actually tried to, to follow the same suit uh, and in that uh, in that fight in 1947, it was a lot closer fight. And, you know, I don't know if honestly, I don't know if Joe Lewis was the same fighter uh, by the time. He, and I'm not discrediting a Jersey Joe at all. I mean, uh, uh, but uh, but he was definitely a weathered fighter by the time uh, 1947 came around. I mean, you're talking 10 years. Oh, oh, yeah. He was an old man. You know, Lewis was uh, was nearing his end, his demise as a, as a, as a great price fighter, as a great champion. And. You know, there's only two prize fighters even come close to uh, Joe Lewis's uh, re- re- regime or uh, holding the title, the length, of, the longest length of time, of course, Joe Lewis did. But the second man coming closest to holding his title was Muhammad Ali, and then the third man that that, uh, that comes close is uh, your man Larry Holmes. Now wait you know, a minute. Now wait a minute. Muhammad Ali. Are you counting total time? Because I, we're talking about uh, Joe Lewis held it, you know, consecutive. Days. Consecutive. But, yeah, I'm counting total time with Ali. Oh, I oh. mean, I know, I mean, I don't want to go into Ali, but. Why? Uh, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Why not? He, he, <laughs> I don't want to piss the listeners off. Uh, oh. Muhammad Ali win, wins the title. He's stripped, okay, and then he comes back. And, and so it's a collective time, yes. And mm-hmm. then he, Ali re, Muhammad Ali retires, and then he comes back, and you know, and he fights, and and he wins the title for the third time. So it's a collective time with Ali. But with Ali, he holds the title collectively, is second to our man Joe Lewis. Hmm. Yeah, they they showed third us. Third is is in the third man is it, your man Larry Holmes. Yeah, they sh- they showed some kind of a stat. Uh, I I should have written it down, but. Um, there was some kind of a stat with uh, heavyweight world title defenses. Joe Lewis is number one. I, I believe Klitschko is on that list. He's, he's like either number four or number five. And uh, uh, I do believe Ali and, and Larry Holmes are, uh, are are the next ones on the list. So uh, which uh, uh, which uh, Klitschko? Uh, Vlad? V- Vlad. Vlad. The the one that yeah. just won the other the, the other yeah, day. Right, uh, but, uh, yeah. But but anyway, Joe Lewis. Uh, you know, boy, does time fly. Uh, Joe Lewis was a former world heavyweight champ. We both know that he's a boxing hall of famer. Sixty six wins for his career. Fifty two coming by knockout. Uh, he has three losses. Uh, two of them by stoppage. One was, of course, uh, the Rocky Marciano loss uh, in uh, 1951, his last uh, fight as a, as a professional. And then, of course, the fight that uh, uh, Tony and I are talking about, his first professional loss against Max Schmeling way back in uh, 1936. Along the way, he uh, also lost to Ezra Charles when, uh, you know, I, I believe, now I'm not 100% sure, but I believe Ezra Charles had the NBA World Heavyweight title, but New York State still recognized uh, Joe Lewis, or it could be vice versa, or one of them still recognized Joe Lewis uh, as the champ, uh, even though he uh, announced his retirement. Uh, he never uh, lost uh, his uh, uh, title in the ring until that loss to uh, uh, Ezra Charles. But uh, Joe Lewis, clearly uh, one of the division's best fighters of all time. I mean, we can't argue with that, right? N- not in my opinion. Uh, I, th- I think, Billy, I think you... Uh I think on the Ezra, uh, Ezra Charles deal, uh, you mentioned, you know, he had uh, NBA uh, heavyweight. Wasn't it, and I'm not saying I'm right, Don't you know, this is good for conversation, but wasn't it uh, he, the New York State Athletic Commission on 
June the 30th, recognized Ezra Charles as a champion. And July the 1st, the NBA recognized uh, Ezra Charles as the champion. Wasn't that the way it went? I don't know. Uh, I I don't have that in front of me, but well, I don't either. I'm, I'm you know, I'm going. You and I don't have the luxury of having. You know, you you do me wrong. Everybody else you talk to, you give them a month advice in advance, and and you, they got all kinds of paperwork in front of them and everything. And you have me go by memory. And that's why these these listeners get on my butt so much because I'm trying to <laughs> go by memory. Yeah, but um, I I'm just I know that as a Charles, uh, I know that he was uh, looked upon as as uh, that fight was was classified as a heavyweight title fight. That I know, and absolutely and, was, and and how. How Joe Lewis got to that fight, I'm 99% sure that he had announced his retirement and then came back to fight as a Charles. And even though Charles had won the title, um, that you know, many people still felt that, that it belonged to uh, Joe Lewis because he had never lost in a ring. Same thing uh, as when happened with, uh, with Muhammad Ali and uh and and joe frazier you know a, a lot of people felt that muhammad ali still was the w- world champion because he never lost the the title in the ring until he lost that first fight against uh smoke and joe at, at madison square garden so i i think it was along those lines nonetheless he had retired but uh you you were right uh i have joe lewis on my all-time uh heavyweight list at number five i i have uh uh, Jack Johnson, number one. Rocky uh, Marciano, number two. Jack Dempsey, number three. Ali, number four. Uh, and uh, Joe Lewis, number five. That's the way I have it. On my top all-time greats in my top five, I have Jim Jeffries, number one. Jack Johnson, number two. Jack Dempsey, number three. My favorite fighter of all time. Uh, Joe Lewis, uh, number four. And, and Jim Corbett, number five. That's my top uh, five uh, heavyweights of all time. Well, we were close. We were close. Yeah, we're close. Well, you know, it's a great conversation. You know, any time you put out a list, it's a great conversation. You know, it, it makes good. It makes for good conversation and good argument, I guess. You know, but well, Lewis was a great man, uh, Billy, and, and one of the greatest uh, heavyweights that ever lived, in my opinion. Uh, he uh, is a two-time Hall of Famer. The uh, World Boxing Hall of Fame inducted him uh, first. In 1990, the International Boxing Hall of Fame inducted him into their Hall of Fame, and he'll go down in history, as long as you and I are alive, he'll go down in history as one of the greatest. When we, you and I die, uh, and the younger historians come on, uh, even Muhammad Ali will fade, and, and uh, somebody else will take his place in time, and I'm not putting Ali down, it's just that they fade as as time goes on and they're forgotten and what i'm about is trying to keep their their damn memory alive because they're great men and they all deserve credit you're 100 percent right and you you forgot one very important hall of fame that uh, joe lewis is part of he was inducted into the billy c boxing hall of fame this year he's a 2012 inductee so, well, all right it's about time you did it hey, you know what you know it took two years but that was it but uh anyway tony <laughs> Another great segment. Uh, I look forward to uh, next time when we uh, uh, talk about the heavyweight division. Well, Billy, before we go, let's, let's add one more thing on Joe Lewis uh, in his amateur career. Okay. He, he was an amateur, and, and he fought all, all his amateur career. He fought as a light heavyweight. Hmm, he I won know. two uh, uh, light uh, heavyweight championships as an amateur. He had 54 uh, wins as an amateur and four losses. And uh, 43 wins were coming by knockout in his amateur career. So not only was he a great light heavyweight amateur prize fighter, he was one of the world's greatest heavyweight champions of all time. He certainly was. And a uh, uh, great time talking about Joe Lewis, uh, the Brown Bomber. Definitely uh, both in our top five, both in our top five. So Yes, sir, absolutely. And he's going to remain there in mind. <laughs> mine too. So, Tony, until next time, my man. Good talking to you, champ, and uh, next time. All right, brother. I'll talk to you soon. All right, my man. All right, take care. That's Tony Treem. Uh, we're doing the uh, heavyweight, the history of the heavyweights. I don't know, heavyweight spotlight. I don't know what the hell we're calling it now. But uh, anyway, listen, I got to take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 